once again to the miracle hour broadcast. Um, I hear so much of good news from many of you who sometimes speaks to me uh, regarding the program and the broadcast and how greatly you are blessed and I'm so joyful to know what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. Today, in today's broadcast, we will look at another promise for this miracle hour. Another promise from the Word of God. Last time, I'm sure you remember, it was the promise of protection. Today, we are going to look at the promise of provision. God is a God of provision. And today, whether it be the morning, afternoon, evening or night, you are watching this broadcast. It could be a repeat, but still I'm believing for the influence and power and the grace of the Spirit of God to enter through those television screens into your living room or your laptops or wherever you may be, wherever you may be, whatever situation or condition you may be going through. And my prayer today for you this day is that you will experience what the promise of provision is. Shall we pray together? I want us to pray together. Father, I commit that blessed one watching this broadcast today. You said in your word, do not just be hearers, but doers. You said in every parable, let them that have ears, let them hear. Lord, in Revelation, you said, May the, let them that have ears ears hear what the spirit says to the church holy spirit move and touch that loved one right now move and bring about a miracle for that blessed one right now we submit ourselves to you this day speak into our lives may the seed of your word fall into good ground and bear much fruit in jesus name help us for you are our helper in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. I hope you have your Bible with you today, your notebook or a pen or something. If there are some people who don't even need a notebook, but they have a better memory than anyone else, even without taking notes. Some people remember better. So whatever your methodology is, it doesn't matter. Just pay attention this day. And I pray that the words that are going to proceed out of my mouth will truly enter your hearts and find a lodging place to bear much fruit. So today, on this miracle of a broadcast, it is the promise of provision. The promise of provision. God has promised provision for you and I. We're going to begin at the book of Proverbs, chapter number 22, verse number 6 and 7. It will come on your screens also. The scripture says, Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it and the following verse is very surprising the scripture says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender today's message beloved is not just about god's provision when it comes to money god provides more for us than just money but when we say the word provision people immediately think of finances but today let's think of it in a broader sense than just money the scripture tells us that this has a lot to do with training how we think of money how we think of provision you know i'm sure many of you who are watching this broadcast you have different ideas about provision you have been taught different things about money you have been taught different things about how god provides some of us are taught when you give god will give back some of us are taught the law of sowing and reaping all of that is good but let's look at provision in a deeper sense in a deeper sense if you want to know what provision is like you must know what the heart of god is like if you want to know how God provides, you must know how and what God's heart is like. For example, let me give you an example. My eldest daughter loves to go marketing or even shopping. And one day when I was taking her into one of these marketplaces, and uh, she took the liberty of taking her own basket. She's only five years old. 
took her own basket. While I took a bigger basket, she took a smaller one. And she said, Daddy, this is for me. And I said, yes, you go and you, you collect anything. But before you do anything, I have taught her, she must ask me. She must ask me first, can I have this, Daddy? And then I will give her the approval and she can have it. Well, this time she did it a little different. She took the liberty of taking this basket and she went around this, this marketing place, a very popular place that many of us go to. And she took the liberty of taking things off the shelf and she kept on loading her small, this little basket of hers. And when we came to the checkout counter, I looked at her little basket and I was surprised because there was so much of things and stuff she had collected and taken but she never asked me for permission so i looked at my eldest daughter and i said sweetheart i said michaela that's her name i said michaela i have taught you that i have taught you to ask before you can receive something or take something so i have told you you must always ask daddy can i have it can I have it. Can I have it? And I repeated myself until she got it. And I asked her to repeat it back to me. And I said, Nicola, what did Dana just say? She looks at me in the eyes and with a smile on her face, she says, I can have it. I can have it. I said to her, ask me, can I have it? She says to me, I can have it. Beloved, you know why? Even a five-year-old daughter knows the heart of the father. How much more must you and I know the heart of our father? When we say, Father, can I have it? The father says, you can have it. Whenever you approach your heavenly father, don't approach him with the mentality, can I have it? Approach him like my five-year-old daughter. Approach him like my five-year-old daughter approached me. I can surely have anything I want from a father who has a heart of a father. My precious people of God, I hope and pray you are getting this message today. People think or people teach us, people have taught us and we are still listening to sometimes the incorrect biblical teaching that we must suffer and we must go through so much before God grants us the desires of our hearts. No, you can have what you need in this life. But beloved, to lay a foundation on this message, we must know that our training has a lot to do with how we think on how God provides. Our training, how you and I have been trained when we were small, how our parents trained us and taught us. And when we go into church, how our pastors train us and teach us. And how other people around us train us and teach us when it comes to God's provision. We are taught different things. And then when we are taught, we believe different things. The scripture said to us today, Proverbs 22 verse number 6 and 7, Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it beloved sometimes the reason why we are suffering financially today suffering in many other areas is because we were not trained properly for the scripture says in the next verse the borrower is a servant to the lender and the rich rule over the poor Beloved, look at that scripture. In one verse it says, train the child. In the following verse it says, the rich rule over the poor. Why are those two verses connected? Beloved, because it is important for us to know. I was brought up in a poor family. I came from a poor background. Mom and dad had trouble meeting, uh, making ends meet. But my parents always, especially my mother, would always look at me and say, son, you are going to be rich one day because of Jesus. Precious mother that's watching this broadcast. Precious father that's watching this broadcast. You must look into the eyes of your children and tell them, God will not allow you to suffer like mommy and daddy did. We didn't have bread. You will have enough bread. We didn't have money to pay the bills, but our children will do better than us. 
That is the promise of God's word. For Psalm 127 verse number 3 and 4 says, Our children are going to be our reward. My blessed, precious child of God who is watching this broadcast, our children must be trained for poverty will be the last thing in our generations. If us, we as parents, we look at our generations to come and train them, they will be brought up to know the heart of the Father is to provide all things that we need in life. Can you say amen to that? How we react to money and finances is very important. The scripture tells us in Luke chapter 21 that there was a widow. You may be a widow watching this broadcast. Not all widows are poor. Not all poor people are widows either. There are rich widows also. I know many of them. I know poor widows also. I'm sure you also know people like that. Beloved, in Luke chapter 21, Jesus notices how a widow gives all that she has to God. You know, how you deal with your money and what God has provided, God is watching. God is watching. God is watching his people, how his people deal with what God has already provided for them. On one end, in Luke 21, a poor widow gives two mites and Jesus recognizes it. Whatever you have given to God, however you deal with what God has provided for you, his eyes are on you today. But on the other hand, Acts chapter 5, the Bible says, a couple, one was a widow, the other was a couple, Ananias and Sapphira. They come and they cheat God. They lie to the Holy Spirit. On one end, you have a poor widow who is willing to give all that she has. And on the other end, you've got a couple that have all what they need, yet they are, they are, they are holding on to it with their might. On one end, a woman releases the two mites. On the other end, a couple is holding on to everything they have with all their might. Beloved, which category do you fall into? How do you respond to money? How do you respond to provision? Especially in the month of December, we think a lot about money. We think a lot about how to buy this and buy that and provide for so and so and purchase this and that and to keep ourselves happy. Beloved, how will you respond? to what God has placed in your hand. Will you be like Ananias and Sapphira? Or will you be like that widow who will release everything? Whatever you decide, I want to help you today. And in the next few minutes, I want to take us into this message deeper. And as we go into this message deeper, I don't want you to drown. I want you to pay attention and receive everything that the Holy Spirit has in store for you. And we are going to deal with this in three steps. Step number one, how God provides. Say that with me, how God provides. Step number two, why God provides. Say that with me, why God provides. Number three, when does God provide? When does God provide? So three things, we are going to look at it in three levels. The first level, how does God provide? The second, why does God provide? Three, when does God provide? Are you ready for this? Let's take this from the first level. How does God provide? My precious child of God, I'm sure if you're in a situation today, you might be interested to know how God provides. I have been in tremendously difficult situations wanting and waiting to see how God was going to provide and my precious child of God he definitely came through and he'll come through for you if he came through for me praise be to God I can remember early days when my wife and I had just got married or even before that we were struggling to get an advance to uh, move into a house we didn't have much money at that time and I can remember I had given so much to the church and I hadn't had I didn't have much even before the wedding but God is faithful and he remembers everything that we have given towards his kingdom remember that one day a few weeks before our wedding we still didn't have the advance for our home 
it wasn't it didn't look like it was coming let me be very honest there are times beloved you will feel the provision is not coming but in those times you must trust the Lord you must trust God you must trust him with all your heart my precious people I don't know whether you'll be surprised there was one day a pastor he was a brother he was not a pastor he and his wife they were just visiting Sri Lanka they were just visitors and they came from the opposite end of the world Alaska they came from Alaska and one day they happened to walk into our church this was many many years ago they didn't know that myself and my wife we were struggling we dressed well we never showed people that we didn't have we looked our best for God and beloved this man walks up to me and my wife and says God has spoken to his heart to do something for us what do we want and we told him we don't want anything else except the money we need for the house advance and he said how much do you want and we told him and the next day the finances were provided beloved why am I sharing this story with you he sometimes God will not use your auntie or uncle to provide for you God will not use your pastor to provide for you sometimes the Lord will not even use your next door neighbor we go to our best friends sometimes sometimes beloved he uses none of those he will show you that he is truly God by sending somebody from the opposite end of the world to provide for you and your family that is how faithful God is are you listening to me today that's how faithful your God is he'll choose somebody from Alaska to come to a little island called Sri Lanka to provide for you that is your God and my God take your eyes off your relatives take your eyes off your children take your eyes off of your church and people who provide for you place your eyes on your Savior he is your provider Jehovah Jireh is his name so how does God provide just like the example I gave you that's how he provides in Matthew's gospel chapter 17 verse number 27 the Bible says that there was a need there was a need there was a need to pay the temple tax so people came after Jesus and Peter and asked aren't you paying the temple tax after some time Jesus told Peter Peter since we must not offend them go I'm going to send you to a place where you can find money and I want you to pay close attention to how God provides for a particular need Jesus told Peter Peter I'm going to provide for our needs now Peter go to the sea Peter go to the sea cast in a hook and take the first fish that comes open its mouth and you will find the money that is required to pay the temple tax my precious people of God look at how God provides how did he provide where did he send Peter it amazes me that sometimes when we need something he doesn't send us to banks he doesn't send us to people he will send us to places like the ocean in an ocean you don't find money beloved that's why Jesus wanted to show Peter that there are there is provision in places we have not yet even heard of that's why the scripture says our eyes have not seen our ears have not heard our minds have not yet understood what God has prepared he has prepared provision for you in places that you have not yet even understood in John 21 verse number 6 beloved when the disciples couldn't catch fish they couldn't catch anything maybe you are a daddy today watching this broadcast maybe you are a husband today you're a businessman watching this broadcast and you're worried because you are unable to catch anything you send out all applications for this venture and that venture you send out uh, good uh, proposals you send out good business proposals you do good project 
proposals, but nobody comes back. And you're wondering as a manager or a director of your company, and you're a Christian, and you are following Jesus with all your heart, yet you're wondering, why can't I catch anything? And Jesus told his disciples, just cast your net on the right side. Beloved, look at that simple instruction. Sometimes we, you know, we, we really go into a mode of fasting and prayer and we go into spiritual warfare and, and we do so much strategic praying and we do so much, you know, 10 things to do to get rich and all of that is good. But Jesus didn't go to that detail, beloved. Whenever they couldn't catch anything, he said, take your nets and put it to the right side. There is a right side for your provision, beloved. You you don't have to suffer to, for God to provide. You just have to listen for God to provide. You don't have to suffer for God to provide. You have to listen for God to provide. Put it on the right side. Will you just listen to the Holy Spirit today? It may not be a demon. It may not be a person. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He may be telling you today, put it on the right side put it on the right side the right side a change of direction will provide many things for you beloved I'm telling you number two very quickly why God provides why God provides number one how God provides you understood that but why does he provide why I think the best person to ask this would be Abraham. Why God provides. And when you get to heaven, ask Abraham. But today, since Abraham is not here, the Holy Spirit is. And if you ask the Holy Spirit, why does God provide? He'll remind us about Abraham. And he will tell us, when we provide for ourselves, it is very dangerous. But when God provides for you, it is very safe. If you ask me, beloved, if you provide for yourself, today we look at the church, we look at God's people, they are providing for themselves. I speak to many people, especially males, men, macho men, strong men, qualified men. They will come and say, I am the provider for my house. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank God you are the provider for your house. You ought to be as the head of the house. You must provide for your own. Paul tells Timothy, if no one provides for their own, they are as an unbeliever. You must provide. But beloved, there is a mode that a lot of people get into. They start providing for themselves to the degree that they forget they need a provider. Have you come to that stage now where you have provided for yourself so much that you don't need a provider? My precious child of God, you are in the wrong place. You know why? Because if you provide for yourself, you will end up with an Ishmael. But if God provides for you, you will end up with an Isaac. That is the truth of God's word. If you provide for yourself, you will have to deal with a lot of trouble. But if God provides for you, it will always be Isaac. Pleasant, the promise that God has for you. The promise of laughter, the promise of provision. I'll say that again. If you provide for yourself, you will have to deal with an Ishmael for the rest of your life. But if God provides for you, you will have an Isaac for the rest of your life. This is why God provides. Why? Because if you provide for yourself, you will become God over your own life. And you can't be God over your own life. Place that Ishmael. Give that Isaac also. Let God be your provider today. Wherever you are, lift both your hands to heaven. Put your hand on your heart maybe and with all your spirit say, Lord, be thou my provider from today onwards. I am rich, but I'm not going to provide for myself. All the days of my life, you are going to be my provider. Will you say that? Wherever you are saved from the bottom of your heart, God is my provider. But my beloved, 
I'm going to give you a deeper secret. I hope you can handle what I'm about to tell you today. Right now, in the next few moments, before this broadcast comes to an end, I'm going to give you a deeper secret. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, that there is a deeper way of God providing and why he does it. The story about the talents. Jesus said one man was given five talents, the other two and the other one. I one day thought to myself, why does God give one person more, the other person a little less and another person even lesser than the other? And when I thought about this, and meditated on the story on the talents beloved so much of revelation comes the bible says it was given the talents were given according to their ability beloved god has to be able to trust you with what he puts in your hand because a lot of us waste what god has provided for us today maybe you are suffering unable to pay the bill not because god hasn't provided God has provided long time ago and you wasted that money. Maybe you are an addict to gambling. You wasted that money. You, God provided the money for a bill. You go and buy yourself a new makeup set. Or you go and buy a membership at a, at a nice club. That is not why God provided that money for you. He provided the money for a purpose. And when the purpose changes, you will look up to the sky one day and ask, why don't I have provision? Beloved, that's why ability is important. The scripture says he gave one person five, two, and another person one, according to ability. The ability to handle what God has placed in your hands. Not everybody is able to handle money. Not everybody is able to handle God's provision, beloved. The five talents, the person handled it so well, he, he made it double. Beloved, he made it double. The person who had two made it double. But the person who had one was not able to handle even one. Beloved, I have seen people not able to handle 1,000 rupees properly. And they are asking God for millions. You will not have it unless you are able to handle it. Look at what Jesus says at the end of that story. When the master came back, he took the one from the person who had one and he gave it to the one who had the most. My precious people of God, that's called addition. There is a level called provision where the five talents are given. It is called provision. But when God takes from one end and gives you from the other end, that's not called provision. That is called addition. He provided five, but he added one more. My precious people of God, if you can handle what God has provided from provision, God will take you to addition. Say this with me. If I handle what God has provided well, God will start adding to my life. Provision to addition. The scripture says in Matthew 6.33, you remember that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be provided no all things will be added unto you he is a god of addition also addition comes when you are able to handle provision finally what or why how god provides why god provides finally when does God provide? When? This is very important. When does God provide? In Genesis chapter 2 verse number 8, the Bible says, God created everything and then put Adam into the garden. He didn't put Adam into the garden and then think, okay, now what do I give Adam? No, beloved. Everything was first provided and then God placed the man in that place. In life, that is the law. That is the principle. That is the promise. 
if you are in a situation God has already provided a garden around you to meet every need in your home in your family before the need arises the provision is already there for you beloved in Genesis 22 when Abraham went to the mountain and placed Isaac on the altar and the angel of the Lord spoke and said don't now we know now I know God says that you love him with all your heart and Abraham looked back and there was a ram caught in the thicket of thorns here is my question to you beloved did the ram get to the mountain before Abraham or did Abraham get to the mountain before the ram the Bible says Abraham had to look back to see the ram you know why beloved I believe personally the ram was there before Abraham he just didn't see it he just didn't see it before you get to a place where you need provision God has already provided what you need for that place in life whatever place you are in in life today there is a promise of provision and you know today how he provides you know why he provides and you know when he provides finally a concluding thought for you and your home today as you approach a new year Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verse number 11 this is how you need to pray and the most blessed point that many people love to pray in that prayer the Our Father is the part give us today our daily bread we love to say that don't we give us we love to use that word give Lord give me give me today my daily bread that's in verse 11 Matthew's gospel chapter 6 but in verse 25 Jesus teaches us something deeper and he says don't worry about what you will eat in verse 11 he says give us today our daily bread should be your prayer but in verse 25 you don't even have to worry about what you will eat after almost 14 verses only 14 verses Jesus tells the disciples there is a deeper method of provision even without you saying give us today our daily bread there is a God who provides for you your daily bread that's why Jesus said look at the birds how much more valuable are you today are you saying give us today my daily bread or are you in verse number 25 Matthew's gospel chapter 6 you're not even worried about your daily bread I'm going to pray with you right now that you will understand that he has promised you he has promised you to provide for you he is the God of provision and he is the God of addition father bless that one today with everything that they need in this life the Apostle Peter told the church he that you have provided all things for us that pertain to this life and godliness bless that one may today be the miracle hour a miracle hour of provision and addition in that blessed one in Jesus name and God's people said amen I will see you again at the next miracle hour broadcast with another promise from the throne until then God bless you God is on the throne he is for you and not against you all is well with your soul God bless you